Wow, a advertising. Huh? I like that. Um, yeah, what a privilege it is uh, to, uh, first of all, it's great to be in a Sweet 16, but to have it in New York, Madison Square Garden, where, you know, we all know as the mecca of basketball, not college, pro, anything. And uh, so it's been a big thrill for us. Uh, we know that uh, we're going to play a good team in Kansas State. Uh, it's been an incredible journey, especially this last uh, month and a half, and yet we're playing some of our better basketball. We've kind of alternated between our offense and our defense, and sooner or later I'd like to put the two together if we could ever have both working at the same time. I think, um, you know, we would be a even a better team. And yet, uh, last weekend our defense kind of carried us, which a lot of times is needed in the NCAA tournament. So excited to be here, uh, proud of my team and what they've accomplished so far and yet uh, have great respect for Jerome and what he's done at Kansas State and their basketball team. Okay, once again, if you have a question for Coach Izzo, just raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone over to you uh, and have you ready to go. We'll start here to my right in the middle, second row. Thank you. Uh, Brennan Shabath from WDBM Sports. Tom, you mentioned getting the offense and defense working together. I'm wondering if there's one or two players maybe who you think can really orchestrate that and be the catalyst for that to happen in a game. Well, I don't think there's any question. It's AJ. I mean, uh, you know, your quarterback has to orchestrate, uh, and he's done a much better job. I think last game we didn't shoot the ball really well, and uh, I thought we had some decent shots. We just missed some shots. But... Uh, you know, over a uh, conference season, we were a team that shot almost 40% from the three. So um, I, I, the sample size of two games, I don't think it's in anybody's head. We just didn't shoot it as well in those two games. And I think we'll uh, shoot it better if we get our running game going. I think that'll help. I think this game will be up and down. I think they want to run, we want to run. And uh, yet at the end of the day, you know, you got to make shots no matter who you are. And uh, that helps you win. At the end of the day, though, the other thing that helps you is your defense travels. And uh, over the years, it's it's helped me a lot. We'll stay in the middle uh, on the other side of the aisle. Yep, in the back there. Go ahead, raise your hand real quick just so we can see you. Go ahead. Hi, Sean Woodsor, Detroit Free Press. Tom, you, you've had some awfully good guards over the years, but have you can you recall a time when you've had three guards that play both ends of the floor like these three guys do? You know, it's been a while. I mean, I guess back in the day with Mateen and Charlie, and if you call Morris a guard, but he probably wasn't a guard, so you're probably right. But we got him to guard people, and we had two defenders that were off the charts. And at times now we have three guys that can really guard the ball. And uh, and yet, as you said, now that Jaden is starting to shoot it better, and AJ's shooting it better and, and distributing it better, I. I think I'd have to agree. I thought the best one I had maybe it was a Gary Harris. You know, he could guard you on one end and score it on the other. But I got three guys that, um, and Tyson's, you know, can't be fooled by his size, just like <laughs> they got a guard, you can't be fooled by his size either. But uh, Tyson's a very good defender, probably doesn't get as much credit as he did at Northeastern, where he was Defensive Player of the Year, because he is a very good defender. And we'll stay in the middle again, back on the other side of the aisle uh, here in the third row. Coach Izzo, Rob Collins from Fox 4 in Kansas City. You mentioned uh, what Coach Tang has done in your opening statement. Just Can you elaborate on that? He started with two players and then to get to where they are. Well, he's, he's used the transfer portal well, and uh, it's worked pretty well for him. And I, I think the other thing, though, is you look at him, and, and this is taking nothing away from him, but he is an experienced non-experienced head coach. Uh, I, I spent 12 or 13 years with Judd Heathcote, and that really helped prepare me. I remember Judd saying one time, would you rather take a smaller job and just so you can say you're the head coach, or would you rather prepare for Indiana and Michigan and Purdue every day, you know? And, and I think that helped me. I think Scott Drew really, really helped Jerome, you know? Uh, they built that program. Uh, they built it together, just like I built mine with my assistants over the years. Um, if you watch them, I think he was given a lot of uh, uh, power. 
uh, just like I was at the end. You know, I think Scott had a lot of faith in Jerome. And uh, so he had more than just suggestive power that sometimes assistants have. So I think he was, uh, you know, Roy Williams was born to take over a bigger job. You know, some people leave early and uh, work their way up through the ranks. I think Bill Self did. Some people stay like I did or Jerome did and uh, prepare yourself that way. I, I think uh, he deserves a lot of credit. I think Scott Drew deserves a lot of credit. And I think it, it shows that uh, we need our assistants. You know, assistants are more valuable than we, than sometimes any of us give them. And, uh, and I think he did a lot for that Baylor program and that's why they had the success they had. And Scott allowed him to and help prepare him to be a head coach. And so I'm sure he's very grateful of that too. We'll go right down here in front of me. Go ahead. Al Frusa with the Associated Press, Tom. Talking about Tyson, there's so much kind of lore about these New York City point guards. Is there something that distinguishes New York City kids? Is there an attitude? Is there something about them that is um, notable? Well, you know, he's not from the heart of the city, but uh, he is. He does have that that swagger about him. Uh, you know, his is a little more. Uh, I think sometimes. The New York swagger is a very cocky swagger, and sometimes that's good. You got to be, he's kind of had the happy medium, you know. He's got enough cockiness to be confident, and yet he's an unbelievable kid, you know. And at his size, I mean, he, he, he wants to guard you, but he also wants to take big shots. I mean, he's the best two way player I've had probably since Gary, you know, where he can uh, do it on both ends, and that's so valuable to a team. and and so good to be able to tell other scorers that he can get you 30 at, on some nights and he can shut down the other players. So I don't know if it is New York City. Unfortunately, I don't recruit enough out here, but uh, Tyson would, would definitely give me a lot of reasons. He's been an unbelievable kid. Um, you know, I, I think he was humble. He, you know, he came from Northeastern. Uh, He's appreciative. He gave one of the all-time great speeches after we got beat by Duke and just how appreciative he was to be able to be on those kind of stages. And then this year, the stage is even bigger because it's Madison Square Garden, it's his home grounds, and it is the Sweet 16. So it's been fun to watch him grow, and uh, hopefully he'll play well. You know, I don't think he'll be nervous. Uh, Got me my pizza last night. I'm looking for the cab ride today. We'll stay on this side. A couple rows back. Uh, hey, Tom. Roger Rubin from New York Newsday. Uh, as far as Walker, you know, being back in New York, uh, you know, has he communicated anything to you about a, a certain level of excitement with being here, a certain level of, uh, you know, people are going to come out to try to come see him? You know, has he, like, was, was New York something that was like a carrot dangled to him? <laughs> I just told him, no old girlfriends better show up around me. That's all I told him. But, uh, you know, he was excited. I mean, uh, you know, the, the joke about the pizza in the cab, I, I always tell my players, you help us win the first game and I'll get you through to the second in the weekend because we've had some success on that over the years and in between games last week and that's when I talked to him you know this is a privilege and an honor and it's um, it's something you should dream about when you were out shooting baskets outside you know uh, you know chance to play in Madison Square Garden which growing up in New York it's probably even bigger than it is growing up in the Midwest because um, you know what the garden is. I mean, I just like walking through the garden and seeing the pictures, you know, of all the great performers, the great boxers like Muhammad, and the things that have gone on here are incredible. So he um, he was excited, you know. He's not a he's a, he's kind of a reserved kid. Um, he gets excited. He he gets angry sometimes, but he's a pretty reserved guy. And I just know it meant a lot to him. I know it meant a lot to his family. I mean. What a greater experience to, you know, play Duke in Mike's last game and then play against, uh, you know, Kansas State in his home ground and 
in arguably the greatest arena in the world. Um, pretty cool. Pretty cool for him. We'll come to the other side over here. Yep. It's oh, next to you. There you thanks. go. <laughs> Graham Couch, Lansing City Journal. Tom, you haven't played these guys since your first two years, and uh, home and home series. I think. Did, when when this when you realized you were playing them, did, do you have any recollection of those two games? And you think about where your program was at those moments when you played them around Christmas in those first two years. Yeah, I was mad at Judd. He scheduled those games. I, I think my first year, I I went to Kansas State, Oklahoma State. Uh, my schedule was was off the charts because. He got some home games at the end of his career that, and then I was stuck with the aftermath of that. But, uh, you know, I remember going down there and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a long time ago though. And I, I, I don't think it's gonna have anything to do with tomorrow's game. Uh, I, I just think that uh, I've been blessed to be in it long enough that I have memories like that. You know, I, I can remember back to some of the teams we played and what we did. But as far as uh, anything that's going to benefit me or make me fearful, um, not at all. And we'll stay on that side. Yep, go ahead. Hey, Tom. Adam Zagoria, New York Times. How you doing? Good, Adam. Um, both Tyson and Marquise Noel transferred up from low majors, mid majors, whatever you want to call them. Uh, what did you see in Tyson at Northeastern that made you think he could play at your level and just what does it say about the college game in general now that these low major mid major guys are moving up and making an impact well it's, it's like everything else you know they've earned their keep he played there a couple of years he played for a very good coach and uh, that was one of the things and then when we got to know him and his family I mean he's a hell of a kid he's a good student he does the things the right way um, he hangs his hat on his defense it's almost un-American and illegal now but he does it, and he's proud of it, and uh, uh, and you just gotta love a kid like that. But he works. Um, I I I think he's hungry too. You know, like I think some guys that are at this level all the time are transferring from this level. Um, there's there's too much entitlement. He's not entitled, and. Uh, I absolutely love that about him. He wasn't entitled at all. And if you could have heard his speech after the Duke game, it was kind of about that. It was, you know, I dreamed of playing in places like this, in games like this, against the competition. And uh, so he wasn't going to miss out on that opportunity, you know. And I think that, I think that chip on your shoulder is really a good. I still got a chip on my shoulder uh, because of where I came from, and I think. Too many times those chips are taken off these kids when they're 10, 11, 12 years old, you know, when they're changing AU teams and high schools and junior highs and whatever else they do. Uh, he was, uh, he spoke highly of the place he's be he was at. Uh, he spoke well of the coach. Uh, you know, he just did all the things that I would appreciate anyway. And uh, I've been lucky to have him. And I, I, I think every once in a while, you know, when I'll say, hey, we're taking a bus trip to Chicago, you know, when normally you fly. I said, for me, as a Division II guy, those bus trips were eight, nine hours. But I said, Ty, you, you've taken a few of those too, right? And, and we laugh about it. You know, if you haven't done it, if you had been so spoiled and entitled that you've never done that, you wouldn't appreciate it as much. He appreciates things, and I, I appreciate him for that. We're going to take one more question for Coach. We're going to go across the aisle, on the aisle. Christian Arnold, AM New York. Coach, you kind of touched upon it before, the specialness and the uniqueness of this place. What does this place mean to you? And do you try and press upon your players outside of obviously, um, you know, Tyson who knows the area about what the Madison Square Garden means to college basketball and, and being on the stage? Yeah, I, I, I've always impressed, you know, we played Kentucky here in the, in the uh, Tournament of Champions and we played Duke here, you know, I've set a lot of records here. You know, help Mike set his record for the most wins. Unfortunately, those records were at my, yeah, you know what I'm saying, Adam, yeah. Expense, good word, you know. I, kind of a four-letter word and under guy, so expense is a little more than that, but that's exactly right. It's, uh, you know, so, uh, but there is the thrill of playing here. When you talk to, you know, for us, the Steve Smiths and Magic Johnsons, uh, you know, there's nothing like the Mecca, you know, there's nothing like Madison Square Garden. And so when we have the opportunity to play here, I always talk about it as a privilege. 
You know, we get to play in a lot of great places. But it's not just college basketball either, as you know. It's basketball, period. It doesn't matter what it is. This place is, is known for it. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying I've had a lot of great success here. So this will be a good weekend to change that. All right, Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. All right. Take care, man. All right. See you tomorrow. Yep. New York. So uh, I apologize for asking you again. There is sort of a myth and a lore to being a New York City point guard. Yeah, you know, Bob Cousy to Sue Bird, right? Stephon Marbury. Was there any New York point guards that you sort of patterned your game after? Do you think being a New York guard gives you some, some kind of swagger? What's the, what is your position on the, uh, or what do you think of yourself in, in, um, in comparison to like the, the history of New York point guards? Um, I, I didn't model my game after anybody. You know, I just kind of just played, uh, watched my brother growing up, so kind of play like him. Uh, you know, you do have a swagger, just diff <coughs> different type of swag uh, playing out here. You just got to be tough. Uh, got a different type of finesse with you. Okay, we'll stay in the front row on the other side, though. Here, Adam, go ahead. New York Times, you're going to get a lot of New York questions this week. Um, both you and Marquise, you know, transferred up from whatever you want to call mid-majors, low-majors. Coach was just in here saying um, he thinks guys who played at that level have more of an appreciation for this level and not as much of a sense of entitlement. I guess just what are your thoughts on kind of making that transition and how much do you appreciate, you know, being at this level after Northeastern? Uh, the transition uh, it definitely started off rough. Uh, you know, beginning of the season last year, I was kind of struggling, uh, and kind of figured it out as the season went on. And then now, you know, just getting back to my old self. Uh, you do have an appreciation for it, though. You know, just all the staff you got, uh, travel. Uh, it's all it's all different. Like doing this, it's all different than when you had me major. Uh, on the aisle here, go ahead. Matt Charbonneau, Detroit News. I'll ask AJ this one. Um, Tom was asked yesterday about, again, about the transfer portal and his decision to kind of stick with his guys, you know, not go get other guys and put the faith in you guys. Is that a two-way street for players when you see that, that your coach and the staff has that faith in you? Does, does that kind of create what you guys have become, having that faith in them and having that success now, the way they've done it? Uh, yeah, most definitely. Um, that just shows the confidence that coach had in us. Um, He's seen something in us from last year and uh, knew that the core guys coming back, uh, the veteranship that we had uh, could definitely do something special this year. And um, we're just trying to, you know, it's definitely a two-way street. Um, Coach trusts us, we trust him. So we're just trying to go out there, give it our all, and uh, continue to make memories with each other. All right, we're going to go on the other side here with Roger. Just raise your hand, Roger, so the guys can see you. Okay, go ahead. Roger Rubin <coughs> from New York Newsday. Uh, Tyshawn, the uh, – can you tell us a little bit about like your your New York places that you'd like to go that you liked to go playgrounds that you like to play at teams you'd like to play against places you like to eat things that you've told your teammates about I, I haven't told my teammates anything <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have any favorites I, I haven't really been home in like five years so <laughs> It's a little different. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to go home and see my dog. That, that's, that's about it. Saint. Yeah. Saint Deuce. All right, we're going to come into the middle here. We're going to come up to the front, and then we'll go two rows behind there. So. Hello, my name is William uh, from Local Talk North Tyson. Uh, AJ or Joey or Malik, I uh, want to ask you this question. In reference to this tournament, the, um, how do you guys feel about playing up in New York? Let's start with Malik and then we'll go to Joey. Um, I, I, I'd say I'm excited. Um, it's not my first time playing here. Uh, we play, I played here my freshman year um, and then a couple times over the last two years. So uh, some now I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, some I'm excited about. Uh, Ready for the for the atmosphere. It's going to be a, a fun game. Yeah, same thing. I mean, playing in the garden never gets old. Uh, I'm glad Tyson Walker gets to come back home and play. <laughs> we'll stay on the same side of the aisle, uh, two rows back. Go ahead. 
Joey, I'll, I'll direct this question to you. Christian Arnold with AM New York. Uh, I am curious, just obviously with the game being on this big of a stage and being in New York, how do you guys keep focused <laughs> over the next couple of days so that you don't get intimidated by uh, sort of the atmosphere and the stage that you're on? You know, we've played here before, um, so I think we're used to it, um, playing in this setting. But I think, honestly, you just want to soak up every moment and, and just live in the experience and, and enjoy it. I think that's the best way to go about it. And, um, you know, we've gotten here because of the way we play in our game, and um, we've elevated over the past couple of weeks. So we're just going to go out there and keep playing the same game, but definitely um, live in the moment and, and soak it all in. We're going to stay on this side of the aisle, but we're going to go to the outside. Go ahead, here in the middle. Zach Brazil, New York Post. Uh, Tyson, what did Tyson? What did you remember, you know, about playing in the Catholic League, and did you ever face Marquise Noel? Uh, yeah, we played a couple times, uh, sophomore and junior year. Uh, Catholic League is good. Uh, a lot of talented people. There's a lot of big names playing in that game. Uh, some in the pros. So uh, it's a good league. It still, is a good league. Uh, not that's really what, it. What is it like to? to now see a guy you played with against high school and now to be facing him on this stage? Uh, he's not the first one, uh, but it's definitely cool because uh, we played each other a lot of times, but just play on this stage, it's even better. Yeah, we'll go across the aisle uh, in the middle there. Go ahead, just raise your hand so we can see it. Go ahead. Chris Solari, Detroit Free Press, AJ. Um, Talk a little bit about Tyson's development and how you two together have kind of worked the point and worked off the ball and the things that you do that make each other special. Uh, I think it starts with our friendship, you know, um, that, that goes deeper than basketball. And uh, just a transition um, that he's made uh, from last year, starting off a little slow, um, the adjustment he made it coming in and playing Big Ten basketball. And um, he's just back to his old self. Um, he's back to Northeastern Tyson. He's back to the Tyson I know him forever. And now uh, he's just more comfortable. And um, he got one job out there, make shots, score the ball. You know, I'll, I'll put everybody else in position to make shots. So uh, just him having that confidence in himself, the guys having the confidence in him, coach, um, it just shows. And uh, it's definitely something fun to be a part of. We'll stay on that side. We'll go deep in the corner. Go ahead. Hi, Saul Steinberg, Pix11. Uh, Tyson, I read a quote from you in high school. You were playing against St. Peter's, and you said the team had the will not to want to go home, and that's how you guys won the game. Do you guys feel the same way here now, that this team has the will not to want to go home? And that was six years ago. <laughs> uh, uh, for sure. Uh, I feel like uh, the season has flew by, so... Uh, we don't want this to be our last game. Uh, you know, you still want to have more practices. We we'll still want to be able to play another game. So just, just trying to put, put some more good halves together. We're going to stay on this side down in the front row here. Go ahead. Just raise your hand so the guys can see you. Okay, go yeah, ahead. Right down here, guys. Kellis Robinette from the Kansas City Star. I had a question for both Malik and Joey. Um, just what are your initial impressions on Kansas State, and what stands out to you about the way they played in the first couple rounds of the NCAA tournament? Let's we'll start with Malik, and then we'll go to Joey. Um, first initial impressions, uh, just a really great team. Uh, they've had a, a heck of a year, um, played, played very hard, uh, won a lot of very big games, so definitely a very capable team. Um, I mean, I don't really know what, I, what else to say. Kind of, they're just a really good team. Yeah, I would say extremely talented. Um, they played in arguably the best conference in, in um, America this year, so they've seen it all. They've seen really good opponents, but uh, definitely really talented and, and um, got some really good playmakers. We'll come across the aisle. Do you have a question? Sure. Yep, on the aisle. Go ahead. Sean Woods with the Detroit Free Press. Joey, you said last week you thought you guys had the best backcourt in the, the tournament. Tom was just saying earlier he – couldn't remember having three guards that played both ends in in his career. I'm just curious for you to maybe expand on that a little bit. Just what makes these these trio so formidable? I mean, I would say, you know, AJ talked about it. Friendship, um, you know, it goes deeper in basketball. So they got a connection where they just, you know, they they know where they are in the court. They know where each other are. Um, they make plays for each other. Um, Jaden as well. I mean, they all do it on both ends. They can score. They can defend. Um, they can they can make passes. They can make plays for other guys. So, um, you know, all their games are pretty complete. We'll go across the aisle here in the third row. 
Hey guys, Brennan Shabath from WDBM Sports. This question's for Malik and Joey. Um, third game in a row with a guard-heavy team where they get a lot of their scoring from guards. Um, I'm wondering what you guys can do defensively or what maybe responsibility you feel on defense to maybe lighten the load of A.J. Tyson and Jaden on defense, you know, playing against some of these, you know, the best scorers in the country. Start with Malik and then we'll go to Joey. Um, i just say kind of the same role as, as, as if – it was switched. Um, Coach emphasized help defense a lot. Um, it's something that, that we've been working on since my first day here at Michigan State. So really it's just making sure that everybody else is in the gaps, um, making sure that if we have to rotate, we're, we're able to help them out. Um, and, you know, obviously grabbing rebounds and stuff like that just so we don't have mul- they don't get multiple shots, st- things like that. We always talk about guarding your yard. Um, you gotta got to be able to guard one-on-one defense. Um, you know, if there's a switch that occurs, you got to be able to stay on your ground and just stick with a guy uh, for a possession or whatever it might be. But yeah, rebounding, limiting them to one one possession is important too, so they just get one shot. We'll stay on that same side on the outside. Go ahead. Just raise your hand so guys can see it. Go ahead. Hey guys, uh, Scott Reese, KCTV 5. Oh, there we are. Scott Reese, KCTV 5. Um, Malik, this is for you. You spent three years Sunrise Christian in Kansas. I realize different part of the state, but... Any experience with Kansas State? Did you ever go to a game? Did you have any thoughts about the, that program when you were there? Yeah, I had a um, I had a teammate who was committed to go there, eventually decommitted. But I, I went to a football game uh, not too long ago, and now one of my uh, Mokin assistant coaches coaches there right now. So I know a little bit about the program, a little bit. Obviously, it's a different coach now than it was back then, but 